In this video, we're going to learn about how to add capacitors in series and parallel. So very often we'll have a set of capacitors. So in this case, they're in parallel on the left and we'll want to simplify them. So we'll want to make our lives easier. And the way that we can do that is by turning these two capacitors into one equivalent capacitor. Now this might seem like black magic, but all, we, all we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a box around these two capacitors and we're gonna treat it like a single thing. And if we do that, we wanna ask the question, what is the capacitance of that single thing? Now what defines a capacitor is that the charge on that capacitor is equal to the capacitance C multiplied by the voltage across that capacitor V. Or if we rearrange this equation, the capacitance is equal to the charge divided by the voltage. And so if we can figure out the voltage across this box and the charge on the top of the box and the bottom of the box, so plus Q and minus Q, in terms of the charges and voltages on these two capacitors, then we can figure out what our equivalent capacitance is. Now these capacitors, because they're connected at both ends, this is what we call a parallel connection. And because they're connected at both ends, they've got the same voltage across them. So that's what connecting things at both ends with a wire does. It makes sure that those two things have the same voltage. So this point has the same voltage as this point, and this point has the same voltage as this point. And so we can say that the voltage across capacitor one is equal to the voltage across capacitor two, which we'll just call V. Now, what about the charge? Well, we don't really know. Uh, there's gonna be some charge Q1 on the first capacitor and some charge Q2, so plus Q2, minus Q2 on the second capacitor. Now, we don't know what those individual charges are, but we can say that the total charge is gonna be the sum of the individual charges. So the total charge in this on these top plates is just Q1 plus Q2, and the total charge on the bottom plates is negative Q1 plus negative Q2. And so if we wanted to figure out what our equivalent capacitance was, all we need to do is divide the total charge of this sort of this box that we're trying to figure out, which is Q1 plus Q2, and divide that by the voltage of the box, which is just V. And so if we expand stuff out, oh, this should be Q1. So this is Q1 over V plus Q1 over V plus Q2 over V. But this is just the capacitance of capacitor one. It's the charge divided by the voltage across that capacitor. So this is C1 and this is C2. And so our equivalent capacitance for two things that are in parallel is just the sum of those two capacitors. And this works for not just two capacitors, but three capacitors or four capacitors. All you have to do is add the, all the individual capacitances. Now, I've drawn them being in parallel sort of vertically like this, but you can draw them however you want. You can draw them horizontally, you can draw them sort of at a weird angle with respect to each other. You can draw them in some absolutely horrible configuration where maybe one looks like this and the other is like, woo, woo, woo. And then we've got another capacitor over here. As long as they are connected at both ends, that's the only thing that matters for parallel capacitors. So there has to be a wire going from one end of each capacitor to the other end of each capacitor. So they have to be connected at two locations. So that was capacitors in parallel. What about capacitors in series? Well, we can do the exact same trick that we did before. So let's say we have two capacitors, C1 and C2, and we're gonna wrap these in a box. So we're gonna wrap these in a box like so. And we're going to try to figure out, can we create a single equivalent capacitor that behaves exactly like a combination of two capacitors? We're trying to find our equivalent capacitance. 
So remember that the capacitance is just defined as the charge on one of the plates, which we call Q, divided by the voltage across those plates. So this is V, and this is plus Q, this is minus Q. So what is V of our box in terms of the voltage of the individual capacitors? Well, because they're in series, it's just the sum of the individual voltages. So we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law for this. The voltage, the total voltage, is just the sum of V1 plus V2. Now what about the charge? Well, this one is a little more subtle. So let's say that our top capacitor has a charge of Q1. What does the charge on our bottom capacitor have to be? Well, because this bottom plate of the top capacitor and the top plate of the bottom capacitor are connected by a wire and they're isolated from everything else, that means that there can't be any net charge on the combination of these two plates. So if I have charge minus Q1 here, I have to have charge of plus Q1 here. Because when these capacitors start out their lives, everything is uncharged. There's no net charge anywhere. So anytime we charge up a, ser a set of series capacitors, any negative charge we get on this bottom plate of the top capacitor has to be balanced out by a positive charge over here. And so this plate, because capacitors have the same charge on each of their plates, this bottom plate has to be minus Q1. And so the charge on the first capacitor is the same as the charge on the second capacitor, which I'll just call Q. And this is the same Q as would be on our equivalent capacitor, because we see a positive charge of plus Q or plus Q1 up here, and that's what we see on top here. And we see a charge on the bottom plate of minus Q or minus Q1, and that's what we see over here on the bottom plate of this capacitor. So if we just plug in what we got for Q and what we got for V, so Q is, well, it's still just Q. Uh, v is now V1 plus V2. Now, this is a little awkward because there's not, like, there's, there's no easy way to separate this out into something simpler. But if I were to flip the Vs and Qs, then I could separate it out into something a little more interesting. So if I instead take 1 over C, that's equal to V1 plus V2 divided by Q, or V1 over Q, and this is, I'll, I'll just keep calling this Q, V1 over Q plus V2 over Q. And this on the left is just one over the capacitance C1, because C1 is Q over V1. This on the right is 1 over C2. And so it looks like 1 over C is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. Or if we wanted C, we could say that this is just 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 all to the minus 1. Minus 1. So for series capacitors, it's a little more complicated than adding parallel capacitors, but it's exactly the same as adding parallel resistors. So the formula looks exactly identical. Now, I've also, I've drawn these series capacitors as being on top of each other like this, but you'll see them in lots of different configurations. So this is a pair of series capacitors. Uh, this is a pair of series capacitors. And you know, we can have something ridiculous like this is a pair of series capacitors. The only thing that matters is that they are connected at one point. So the capacitors have to be connected by a single wire and there cannot be anything else connected to them. So if I were to connect another capacitor off here, this would no longer be a series connection. This connection has to be the only it, it has to only connect the two capacitors and nothing else. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.